from 1984. Okay. Streets of Fire. You are about to enter a world unlike any you've ever seen before. Where rock and roll is king. The only law is a loaded gun. Where the beautiful... Stay and see the show, it's really good. The brutal... I want Tom Cody. And the brave all meet. From now on, it's for real. In Streets of Fire. I have heard so much about this movie. Oh, you have? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I figured the only thing you knew was the no. poster. I know the poster. Cool poster. Yeah. This yeah. is like a rock opera. Isn't yes. It? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Does this also have Harry Dean Stanton? Because uh, he's in he's no, in Red Dawn. No, it doesn't. This Fuck too? Red Dawn. Yeah, no, it doesn't. Okay. No, no. Okay. Who is in this? Who's the main guy? Bring uh, bring this I up. I can't remember who the main actor is, but there's like there's only two name actors that I know of that are in this. I'll I'll get to them. Okay. Okay. I have never heard a single person ever reference this film. Really? I didn't. I've heard it talked about before. I, I I knew almost nothing about it. All I ever knew was the cool, slick poster, that like neat looking poster. And it said Streets of Fire. I was like, what is this film? I'm like, it's in, it's mid 80s. It's like golden era of film. I'm like, this could be anything. Is this a hidden gem? It kind of is. Little asterisk. Like, it, it's really good, but it's not amazing. Okay. You know? But like, it's, is it like a musical? Then is it basically like a, a rock no, opera? No, not really. It's not a musical. It's not okay. like uh, Phantom of the Paradise or, or like it, Rocky Horror. It, it seems like it might be kind of like that. Yeah, it's got a rocking soundtrack and it's constantly like hitting you with like tunes. It's and like it's, driving it's through it's the very, plot with it, like songs. It's kicking very, in. Uh, very theatrical in performances okay. like the way people like the the blocking and the action yeah. and the s- direction is very it feels like, like it could be a play yes almost. like very stage play okay yeah uh so it it starts off with text informing us this is a rock and roll fable cool in yeah. another place in another time that's the opening text of the film and it's set in like this dystopian uh, future, but it's like uh, it's a dystopian future, but it's like 1950s style. Oh, interesting. Because you know how the 80s had the yeah. nostalgic for the 50s, so it's like a hyper 50s dark dystopian world. <laughs> of course, it's yeah, so so 80s. fucking cool. Yeah, I know, and it's funny how it's like it's so 50s looking, and that makes it so 80s. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. so fascinating, right? <clears throat> like everyone looks like they're from the 50s so like people are wearing like the long skirts and like all the guys have like um heavy product in their hair and like greaser slick, hair gr- yeah. or just slicked back like preppy hair just everybody looks like it's uh it's in the 50s i wrote down it's a dirty 50s aesthetic because it's like it's because you said dystopian yes so it's like so it's like it's like everything is 50s style the cars the the clothing the fashion the the style but it's all like covered in dirt. It's like you got a little bit of grime all over everything. It's such a cool fucking aesthetic. It's such a cool like setting. So the movie picks up, it immediately punches you in the dick with like this rocking soundtrack and like this, um, and like it's this rocking, hard hitting soundtrack. And we got this incredible neon light cinematography and it opens with a rock concert. That's cool. Well, that would you... that would not make sense though, because rock and roll in the fifties was just like Chuck Berry type stuff. So, is it like eighties hair metal rock? Like no, no, no. Rock? It's not metal. It's not metal. But it, it is more like aggressive heavy rock that yeah. probably would be more like sixties. You know? Oh, but, really? Yeah. Okay. It, it's like I don't. I'm not a music guy, so don't ask me to give you the history on music and genres. But, but is it eighties like it's, bands? It's hard. It, it might even be like eighties hard hitting rock. I'll just look, but, look it up. Well, it's not a specific song, though, right? No, but I'll look up who did the soundtrack. Uh, Yeah, yeah, you might be able to find some information on it. But this opening is very familiar. Do you recall the opening of Bubblegum Crisis? 
when yes. they're in the concert yeah. hall. Yeah, yeah. That's the opening of Streets of Fire. Bubblegum so they Crisis. Just copied they it? just copied it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that that's is cool. literally beat for beat the opening. And there's kind so of a chase too, Bubblegum right? Crisis, for those that don't know, is um, a, a very well regarded, um, a little obscure anime from the '80s. It's from like, like a classic '80s anime. Yeah, classic yeah. '80s anime, and it has this opening of like this hot chick. With like a, a rock and roll band yeah. just belting out this badass rock song at like a concert with all these neon lights flashing and everyone being like, yeah, yeah. that's the opening of Streets of Fire. Awesome. It turns out uh, this movie is actually hugely influential in Japan and influenced a whole genre, a whole subgenre of anime. And a lot of you will credit it for resurrecting uh, the delinquent subgenre in Japan. Oh, interesting. It's fascinating. Like, who would have thought this would have influenced, like, anime, like, Japanese culture? I don't know. It's neat. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, it's not a film people would talk about much, but I guess it was bigger over there. I feel like it started a whole thing of the the dystopian rock opera, like, thing. That became a a thing in a lot of, like... I don't know if this was the one that started it, but it's one of the most influential, yeah. Even in um, comics of the time in the 80s, there was, like, a a run in... um, New Mutants, where there's like an X an X Men rock opera. There's a couple ep- like issues like that too. So it was like I think it was a cultural thing in the '80s. Was like the idea of like rock and roll, like opera musical type shit. So, uh, so while this is happening, uh, she's like the concert's going on. A motorcycle gang whose name I can't remember. I think it's like the Bumpers or something. Uh, like the typical bumpers. Steer, I don't remember. It, it might have been. It's probably cooler than what I just said. But it's like this motorcycle gang uh, who are like stereotypical, like fifties gang looking, like exactly what you'd think from like those old, you know, rebel movies. Yeah, yeah. The motor- James Dean, James Dean era. They're all got the slick greaser hair, and they're all wearing like over the top outfits. And the leader of the gang is one Willem Dafoe. Really? Yes. <laughs> Young Willem Dafoe. Holy yeah. fuck, he looks like a baby in this movie. And they rush into the concert and rush the stage and they kidnap the lead singer Ellen Aim and absolute chaos breaks out. Uh meanwhile, our protagonist Tom Cody comes home to visit his sister who asks him to save Ellen because it turns out that Tom Cody's like I can't quite remember his background, but I believe he was like a detective or something at one point, or he was like a gun. I think he was like a gun for hire, like some sort of thing. It's a little nebulous on okay. what exactly his career was. So are these people meant to be like 20 somethings or are they like teenage? Like, no, they're like, I think 30. They're all like adults. Yeah. Then. They're all like young adults. Okay. Yeah. Like they're all young adults. They're, 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 when I picture they're like, old enough that they had a life. Okay. Like she's like a pop singer. <clears throat> so she's probably like 26, 28. He's probably like 30. Because oh, okay. like I was picturing same. like a sock hop with like teenagers dancing. No, and like no, bi- it's not biker, that young. Biker youths or something. But, no, okay. everybody's a little bit older. Uh, so Tom Cody comes home, the main guy, and his sister's like, Ellen's been kidnapped. And he's like, why should I care? And he's like, oh, come on, Tom. Like, you got, you know, you guys had a thing together. So like they were like star-crossed lovers that had a falling out and like they're supposed to be like the true love like they still feel for each other kind of thing yeah uh, but then it's very clear like they all they all each went down their own path and you know they, it's it's there's been so much time apart there's still like an old wound there yeah uh and then her manager shows up who's her current boyfriend played by Rick Moranis Really? Yeah. <laughs> and Rick Moranis is playing against type. He is an asshole. Oh, he's actually He's playing an like, ass- a, like a mean asshole guy. Like, oh, wow. He's still like got the nerdy Rick Moranis. Like you can't make Rick Moranis look tough, but like he's just playing like a dick. He's very just like. And he's playing it straight. Like he's serious. playing it straight. Yeah. There's no comedy. He's playing. He's weird. very. He's very. Yeah, it's very weird. He's being very arrogant and douchebaggy. Like he thinks he's better than everybody. He's constantly talking down to everybody, you oh, know, yeah. and he hires him to find uh, to get Ellen, save her from the biker gang. Okay, why would they kidnap her? Is there any like motive? Uh, I think it's just that like Willem Dafoe's insane. He's basically just like obsessed with her for whatever reasons. He's like, I'm gonna make her my queen. Like it's something like that. Okay, like he wants to like sleep with her, uh, consensually, consensually. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't think consensually. Uh, <laughs> what? What? The, the, uh, the way to describe the film is it's basically if you took Greece and crossed it with Escape from New York. <laughs> That's awesome. You get Streets of uh, yeah. Streets of uh, Streets of Fire. That's probably the best way to describe this movie. You're, that sounds really cool. It, you're just you're taking like the dystopianness and the 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 action plot of Escape from New York, and you're throwing that that muck onto the grease like fifties, yeah, like yeah. you know, happy go lucky aesthetic and vibe, and it and it works to quite a bit of extent. Because uh, you've also got like the romance and the drama going on of like the characters. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's visually stunning. It's got uh, gore, like absolutely gorgeous sets, costumes, lights, cinematography. Like it is a feast for the eyes. It's beautiful to watch. Like every frame is just like it. It, it looks great. It's such elaborate costumes and sets. It's like again, it's from the eighties, so it's like even their cheap movies looked like yeah. better than yeah. our top movies today. I just fucking love that era of film. You know, like. Even something like this, I, I'm going to highly recommend watching it because it's just got so much in it that just makes it a good watch. So it sounds it's like not a, a lot of characters. It's, it's not a good it. film. Like the film itself is is fun to, to to look at, but as a story, it's very clunky and, and and does it actually work? No, it doesn't really stick the landing. It yeah. it has a lot of plot problems and pacing issues, but like it's just so fun to look at. Um, the the so the director. It was directed by Walter Hill, same guy who directed 48 Hours. Oh. Okay. And The Warriors. Oh, shit. Okay. So it, it, I imagine he's pretty good at that grim and gritty. Yes. Like, like uh, almost like kind of gang stuff. Yeah. But it feels very, <clears throat> like the tone of the movie almost feels bigger than itself. Like it just feels like it's so popcorn, bubblegum. Like it, it's all surreal in the, the way, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, it's very hard to buy into this world because it's so over the top. But it's fun to watch. But it's fun to watch. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like it almost borders on satirical in how over the top it is. Uh, like the ending is like there's like um, Willem Dafoe fights the main character and they have a sledgehammer fight. <laughs> they fight with like sledgehammers. Sledgehammer. It's like okay, sure, yeah. but it's like very like theatrical the way they're fighting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in the director's own words. He wanted to make what he thought the teenage version of him would think was the perfect movie. Oh, that's a lot of fun. So yeah, he, I like that. So he specifically, so he was like, I made a film that like the teenage mo the teenage version of me would think was perfect. Yeah. So he's using all of his like adult skills and to try to make the perfect to try to like yeah. make something that his teenage self would be like, this is awesome. This is the best. Yeah. 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 So he put in hot rods, neon lights, motorcycles, rumbles, rock stars, high speed chases and leather jackets all set to a kick and rock and roll soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm sold. I, yeah. I I'll recommend it. it. Give it a yeah. watch. It's worth a watch. It's fucking fun. 